Welcome back guys. Thanks for joining me as we finish off our revision questions from yesterday on the further tree topic. So we're going to kick off with this example from the 2013 extension one exam. It's a two mark question, the integral of one over the square root of 49 minus four X squared. Okay. So as always, pause the video, have a go if you want, or if you're not sure where to start, then maybe just watch and learn. Okay. So first thing to recognize about this question is what type of integral we're going to be applying. Okay. So if you can look at this question and say to yourself, oh, that looks like an integration of inverse sine. That's good. That's what we're going to do. Okay. Uh, there's a couple of ways you can do this question. The way we did these in class is we did a pretty awesome sub that makes the question a lot easier. Okay. We looked at the question and we said, well, if we compare it to our standard integral for inverse sine, which looks like this, uh, it would be much more convenient if instead of having 4x squared here, we had just x squared or just something squared. Okay, so the way we've sort of made that happen in class is we said, well, let's just let u equal 2x because then u squared will equal 4x squared, which means our integral is now going to look like this. Okay, so we're basically taking the square root of this thing in here, using it as our substitution, and so we end up with u squared in here. Okay, because now this looks more like what we're used to seeing for our standard integrals. Okay, the obvious problem with that is that now we have a variable u and we're trying to integrate with respect to x dx. So we need to fix that. So as we usually do, we go to our, our substitution u equals 2x and we take du on dx, which is equal to 2. Okay, now we rearrange that to make du, oh sorry, to make dx the subject. So we just uh, multiply the dx across and then we divide the two under and we get this. Okay, so now we can change dx in our question to du on two. So we'll do that. Okay, cool. Now we have an integral all in terms of u, so we can uh, party on from here. Probably a good move here is to take the over two out the front of the integral. So just move this half at the front so you don't have to worry about it for now because now this is a very standard integral. Okay, if we compare this to what's uh, down here, we can see that this should integrate to inverse sine of u on seven. Okay, because there's your a squared, so a is gonna be seven. So we'll do that, we'll apply the integration here using that formula. So we have a half times sine inverse of u on seven, like I said, don't forget your plus c, because this is an indefinite integral. And now to finish off our answer, we just need to back substitute where we started, which is that u is equal to two x. And so we get uh, a half of sine inverse 2x over 7 plus c. Okay, as a few of you noted in class, there are a few shortcuts of getting from here to here, but here's the proper way in case you forget those and you need to start from scratch. Okay, so you substitute uh, the square root of this and you move forward from there. All right, and then for our last example for today, this is a pretty challenging integration by substitution from yet again last year's exam. Uh, this is one of the tougher ones that I've seen in past papers, but it's definitely doable. So as always, if you want to write this down and have a go, uh, it's always a good idea. But if you've gotten stuck or you're not sure where to start, then I'll take you through it. So first thing we have is our substitution, u equals uh, cos squared x. For this question, it's uh, useful to remind you that cos squared x really just means cos x squared. Okay, that's going to make um, the, the calculus a bit easier later on. Okay, normally when I'm doing a substitution question and I have limits, that's usually the first thing that I deal with. So I'll do that now. So we're going to change our limits. So we're changing these two x values into u values by substituting these into our substitution. So we're going to get u equals cos of 0 squared, and we're going to get u equals cos of pi on 4 squared. Okay? Don't forget the cos of 0 is 1, so we get 1 squared. And don't forget the cos of pi on 4, or cos 45 degrees, is 1 over root 2. So if we square both of those answers, we get 1 and we get a half. So those are going to be our new limits. Okay, so we can change those now if we want. Zero and pi on four become one and a half. Okay, now the next thing we usually deal with is the dx, because remember, we don't want to be doing integration for x, we want to be doing integration for u. So we go to our substitution and we get dx by differentiating the substitution. So we have u equals cos x squared. We're going to do du on dx. Okay, the way we do that is basically applying the chain rule. So 2 comes down, and now you've got cos x to the power of 1. But now you need to multiply by the derivative of the function inside. 
and the derivative of cosine x is negative sine x. Okay, now we can rewrite that a little bit neater. We have the minus out the front, 2 sine x cos x. The reason I'm writing it like that is so hopefully it's a bit more clear where you would have seen this before. If you remember from the further trig topic, this is our expression for sine of 2x. Okay, 2 sine x cos x is equal to sine of 2x. The reason why that's so useful is because in the question, what do we have? Sine 2x. Ah, it's all coming together. So we have our limits. We have our, if we rearrange this by multiplying the dx across and dividing the negative sine 2x under, we have our expression for dx. So we can change the dx up here to du divided by negative sine 2x. All right, now we just substitute in finally and see what's left to tidy up. So substituting in, this cos squared x is going to become our u. That's what we're substituting. And we have the sine 2x being divided by sine 2x, which gives us 1. Okay, for ease, I'm just going to put the negative out the front and worry about it later. Now, in a few more challenging substitution questions, you get this scenario where after you've substituted and changed everything, your limits look weird. Because in pretty much every integration question we do, the number down here is smaller than this number up here. It's usually like 0 to 2, not 2 to 0. Okay? If this makes you uneasy that we're going from a bigger number to a smaller number, don't worry. If you finish the question like this, you will get the correct answer. If you want to change them, you've got to use this fact here. That if you want to switch the limits of an integral, you change the value of the integral to negative. Okay? If you'd like to know why, I suggest you look up a better YouTuber because I don't know off the top of my head, but maybe I'll know someday. Wait, stop right there. You don't have to go to a better math channel. I, I figured it out. So if we have the integral of a function between a and b, all we end up with is, so capital F here represents the primitive function. So the thing that you get after you integrate. Okay, so once we've integrated, we sub in b and we sub in a and we subtract the two. Okay, so this is what we normally do with definite integrals. So if we were doing the other way around, if we were doing the integral of f of x from b to a, we'd be doing this. Okay, now if I take the negative of this, so we've just swapped the order, we're doing f of a minus f of b. If I make this negative, it means I'm making the other side negative too. Okay, so we get negative out the front, we expand that out and we get negative f of a, and then negative times negative is positive f of b, and we can swap those rounds, and we have f of b minus f of a, which is integral from a to b. So there you go. There is some proof that uh, if you swap the integrals, you just make the integral value negative, I suppose. And there you go. I have a basic understanding of mathematics that is designed for teenagers. I am a genius. You're welcome. Back to uh, your regular programming, sorry. All right. So if you wanted to, you could write 1 and a half as a half and 1. And we're multiplying it by negative 1. So this negative is now positive. Okay. So you can either do this or you can do this. Either way, you are going to get the same answer. I do know that for sure, because uh, I tried both. But anyway, so now we're looking at this, and we're asking ourselves to finish off. We need to integrate 1 over 4 plus u. So again, you've got to ask yourself, what integral am I going to apply here? If your brain goes straight to logarithms, you are on fire today, okay? Because the derivative is 1. Sorry, the, the, the numerator is 1. And the derivative of the denominator is also 1. Okay, so the top is the derivative of the bottom, which means we can apply uh, a log. So our answer for this is going to be ln, natural log, of the bottom. So we integrate. We've got our two limits of 1 and a half. So we're going to do log of 4 plus 1, take away log of 4 plus a half. And we get that, okay? Log of 5 plus log of 4.5. Now we can keep going and tie that up a little bit more because when you've got ln of a number minus ln of a number, you can bring these together as a division. So I can write this as ln of 5 divided by 4.5. Okay, it's usually bad manners to have decimals in your fraction. So I'm just going to be multiplying these two by 2. So I don't get a decimal here. So I'll get 10 over 9. And there is your correct answer. If you manage to get that by yourself, you are a superstar. And maybe you should be teaching me. Okay, so this is a good example of um, a difficult question involving a pretty complex um, substitution, you've got limits to change that end up backwards, but again, you can ignore them if you want, or you can fix them. And we've got some even further trick in here. So this is a pretty tough three mark question, but
But um, if you know your stuff and you follow the steps, you do everything right, not too stressful. All right, that's it for today. So we'll skip to today's homework task. So three tasks for you today. First of all, I want you to chuck down in the comments your favorite uh, Subway sandwich. Still getting those sponsorship dollars, which is good. So hashtag uh, eat fresh in the comments. Thank you. As always, wash your hands. Very important these days, so don't forget that. And then the third part, just a little bit of gentle bullying. Just share this video with one of your friends who always forgets plus C and uh, maybe they'll become better at maths. Who knows? All right. Thanks for joining me once again. I appreciate it. And I'll catch you next time. Bye.